this is Live Prepper here, the World of Jones. My son sent me an article and it really upset me. Now, I have another page called World of Jones. Now, I don't do no fussing or complaining or talk about prepping stuff on that. It's more just how to do and arts and crafts and peaceful things, basically. Um, but I did post it on that page because it really bothered me. It said 21 cities has voted to make it legal to feed the homeless. You know what I got to say for these people? Shame on you. Shame on you. I bet you've never went to bed without a full belly. I bet half of you can't even see your feet anymore. I bet you go down to the gym and you turn around across the street because you don't want the germs of the homeless. I'll tell you something other. You need to spend a month out on those streets with those homeless people and talk to them. You need to spend time working in homeless shelters. You need to spend time feeding these homeless people. You need to spend time joining some of these groups of these people who have to go counseling because of their problems. Do you realize 300,000 of those homeless people are vets? Do you know why they live on the streets? Because they come back messed up. A lot of them lost their homes. Foreclosure. Because they didn't have the money to pay their bills. When they got shipped out to wherever they had to go. They couldn't pay their bill. They lost everything. They come home. They couldn't have a normal relationship with their wife or their husband or their children anymore. They come home because their leg was missing or their arm was missing or their legs was missing. Or they just flat out messed up mentally because they seen so much blood and guts. And things just went against their grain. Because as a general rule, man. Man does not enjoy going out killing. Not that they can't do it. That's for the ones that don't have a conscience. That's the ones that thrives on it. That's the missionaries that winds up feeling more alive doing that stuff. But then they can't handle living in a normal everyday society. And that's why they live that way. So you're telling a vet that come back from one of these wars, from one of these tour of duties, who lost everything because the bank took their homes away from them. They wind up losing their wife or their husband or their children because they couldn't function anymore in a normal society. They went from having a, uh, a good job and they lost it because they had to go overseas or whatever. They got deployed out. And then they come back and they took whatever job they could get and it didn't pay the bills or they couldn't function, couldn't keep a job. They kept losing one job after another. So you're saying, you're telling these people who helps keep America free Keeps your borders safe. And you're telling these vets that you don't care because your little designer outfit might get dirty. Your high priced stores and businesses might get dirty. And you're telling these people of God, these preachers who's getting arrested, these people who are not even religious but runs these shelters, these <coughs> these uh, homeless places, they get together and they decide they're going to get some sandwiches together. They take money out of their own pocket and they'll feed them. You're telling these people that you don't want them around. A lot of them, yes, it's true. A lot of them due to drug addiction. A lot of them was due to alcoholism. And they lost everything because of that lifestyle. But not all of it's that case. If you sit down and do the research, you will find so many state institutions with budget cuts. Budget cuts. Just so they can have their little high dollar thing. If you take and look into their things, their items for their offices and stuff, you'll find out that the carpet would fed a family of four. Probably two or three months. You would find that desk would have probably paid five households lights for a month. But instead, a lot of winds up on the streets. A lot of families. I see children. There's a shelter down the road. I see parents and stuff out there with their children. I see single mothers out there with their children. Having to stay at this homeless shelter just to get back on their feet because they lost where they lived at. They lost their jobs. When Obamacare came into effect, 
companies start cutting people's hours. She says, since we got Obamacare, we're not going to work you as many hours anymore so you can get it. I'm going to tell you what Obamacare did. I got my knee operation through it. My first year was $35 a month. I was thankful to have it because I wouldn't have had my surgery without it. But then when I went to renew it, they wanted $112 a month. I said, I don't have that. I'm not working, but this amount of hours. They said, we can't help you. you got to get Medicare if you can get it. You, you know. This is what they did to a lot of people. They were so excited about it. They got it the first year at a fair price. You're going to be penalized if you don't have insurance. But what's happened to is that people, I've heard time and time again, I went from a 40-hour week to a 29-hour week because they said they're doing it so I can get insurance. Now, how is that helping me any? I'm not able to feed my family. A lot of them, their jobs just totally was gone. <sighs> Boom, gone. That's why you see so many of them working two or three little jobs. So that's what's doing happen with the homeless people. That's why so many of them's homeless. Because we, the people, is what the Declaration of Amendments says. We, the people, says bring your poor, bring your helpless, bring all of it. Says bring them to us. But the haves, the ones that I'm ashamed of, that voted, that it's against the law to feed the homeless. How can you sit in church? And put your donation in that bin. How can you sit in church and pray to God and be happy with all that when you know you voted against the law to feed the homeless? When you complain and you wanted the homeless gone, how does that make you make you a good person? I'm ashamed of those that voted for this. I'm ashamed of these businesses that care more about themselves than taking care of some homeless person. If that homeless person was bothering you, feed him. Send him on his way. Do something. Buy him a bus ticket to somewhere else if you don't want him there. You know, if you want to get rid of that homeless person that bad, buy him a bus ticket. He says, I'll buy you a bus ticket wherever you want to go. Just, I want you gone. I'll buy you a new set of clothes. I'll buy you some food. But I want you gone. But what you did is you complained. You cried about, oh, my business. My high dollar stuff just looks so bad with these homeless people hanging around. And I just don't like it when they come in here trying to stay warm. And how dare they come into the libraries. Oh, I was in there the other day. And I was getting my books and I could just smell them. They just stink so bad. And they're in there. Oh, they're trying to stay warm. But they're in there reading. Most of them reads. You, you'll be surprised how many of really highly intelligent people. Highly, highly intelligent people. A lot of them travels around. They get odd jobs. Save up money and they travel. There's different types of homeless people. There's different levels of homeless people. I don't agree with all of it. I think some of them don't have to live like that. I think some of them can settle in one place if they choose to, but for whatever reason, they don't want to. But they do work. They do day labor. They do odd jobs. They do what they can. But they want to travel from one spot to another. They just can't settle down. But then you got those that are mentally ill, that cannot get disability for whatever reason. Cannot get SSI for whatever reason. Shame on you who voted it. You need to be living with the homeless for a month. You need to be working in those homeless shelters. You need to be feeding those homeless shelter people. The homeless, the mentally ill, those who are sick. You need to find out why they wound up where they was. Do you know how many of these people actually come from good families? Good families. Do you realize how many of these are runaway children? Children living on the streets. So you're saying you're not going to feed these runaway children. You're not going to feed them. Do you know some of them as young as 10 years old it runs away? You know what happens to a lot of these runaway children? These pimps. They find them. And they turn them into prostitutes. Because there's sickos out there who will pay good money for a little 12 year old girl or a little 12 year old boy. But those who don't want, who try to be better you got these little 10-year-olds, 11-year-olds, 12-year-olds, teenagers. 
comes from a home messed up. Not all of them do. Some of them come from good homes. Whatever reason is, they ran away. So you're going to say, I'm sorry. We don't feed homeless people. That means you kids, too. You just need to go back home to mama. What if they was in a foster care and they don't have a home to go to? Maybe the foster home they was in was not so good. Maybe they just got tired of being shoved from one foster home. Now, whatever the reason is, they wound up on those streets. So I'm ashamed of those cities who voted make it against the law to feed the homeless. Because there's a lot of good people out there who takes time and takes their own money to feed these people and try to help them out. And they try to turn around and get these people off the streets if at all possible. They try to get them set up and canceling and, and get them back on their medications if at all possible. It's a never ending job. But those 300,000 vets that's living on the streets, you're telling them, kiss my grits. I don't care if you went over there or not. Because you didn't come back and be where well, you should be. You decide to live on the street. So I don't owe you nothing. I'll tell you what. You owe them a lot. And those children at night goes home with their bellies hungry. The parents who gets kicked out living in a car with their kids. And they're hungry. I want you to explain that to me. You need to be in their shoes before you sign another paper saying it's against the law to feed the homeless. I'm ashamed of you. The Declaration of Independence says, We the people. And the programs are getting cut more and more every year. Used to be, they did a, government did a cheese and milk and butter program. It didn't even matter why you come, you made, you just went and got a line and got it. They used to have other programs. They even had programs for vets. Go, go collect food once a month. They keep cutting these programs. So we don't have the money. Well, you got money for that nice suit, don't you? You got money for that nice office. You got money for that nice house you live in. But you don't have the money to feed these homeless children, these homeless vets, these mentally ill people. You don't have time to feed these people who lost everything. You don't have time to feed these people who just can't get nothing. No disability, no SSI, no nothing. You just don't have time for them. I want to tell you what, when you're sitting in the church, I hope you feel good. When you're putting that money in there and donate, I hope that you feel like you're paying for your sins. Because the ones that put their name on those papers, I'm ashamed of you. And I'm going to tell you something, God's ashamed of you. God is ashamed of you or whoever it is you worship. Or even if you don't worship anybody. There's a mark on you. A mark of shame. And it's going to come back on you. Not Maybe not in this life, but it might come back on you in the afterlife. But I'm ashamed of you. And you should be ashamed of yourself. So don't sit in there in church or whatever. And tell you all this. When you're the one that made certain the children, the homeless people, the vets, and more goes home goes without a meal because you worry about what the city looks like and the companies and the businesses complain. I'm ashamed of you. And we the people of the Declaration of Independence, I want to tell you something. And those of you who do believe in God, God's ashamed of you. So you know what? I bitch about this all day, and yeah, I said the B word. I'm ashamed. I don't do the homeless shelters. I don't feed them. But at the same time, my son does. He lives that life. He's chose to live that life, and he has seen so much. He says, Mom, you won't believe some of the stuff out there that I see. He sees a lot, and he talks about it to me. He chose that life because he felt like God called him to live like that. And he says it's a shame to see some of this stuff and the shape some of these people are in. It's a shame that we are turning back our backs on what we believe in. It's a shame that we don't care like we used to. 
and I'm ashamed of those who voted to stop feeding the homeless. This is Life Prepper for Royal Joan. I want you to be safe, be happy. Bless you all.